Hello all. Welcome to another edition of King Joe's Kingdom of Collectibles. Another unboxing. Uh, pretty much all I've been doing is doing Atari games lately. Uh, I will have a comic book uh, semi-small haul coming up though. Because I'm making a trade with somebody locally who owns a store who had some books. So I went and I gave her a bunch of comics to sell in her store for books she has. But here we go. We have Infiltrate, Space Attack, which I already had them. I, I got this lot for the Infiltrate because mine didn't have the label here. Karate. Ooh, and a nice clean Donkey Kong cartridge. And of course, I got manuals for two of them. Space Attack. And Donkey Kong. And this box is nice. Therefore, I'll keep this box for shipping. I got a ton of stuff. I got boxes for oversized Atari box games. I actually have, uh, for the 5200, I have, uh, Buck, uh, no, yeah, Star Trek. So I didn't have a plastic case for it, so I bought, I bought some of them. I also uh, got coming a ton of loose cartridges because I think it's crazy. Uh, the one lot I paid $25 for, and I'm going to get three games I needed, or I didn't have, I should say, because I think one of them is a, a different variation of the cartridge. But I got, uh, I want to say, it's not Castle Creeps. It's Castle Crypt or something like that. Uh, it's a Fox game, I think. I also got the game Alien coming, but I'll, that, that, that lot that I got the cat, the, the Crypt game in, I paid $25 for, and uh, just that game alone, if I wanted to buy the cartridge, was 15 bucks after shipping. So, I'm like, you know, like how I do it, I'm like, might as well pay the rest of the money, get some doubles, because even, even if I can, I could probably sell some of the doubles for 2 or $3 of the cartridge. Um, but then, like, yeah, I bought two lots, one that had the game Aliens in. And when that game had that, that other game in. And I also got Dig Dug and Pole Position. On which I had the manuals for Pole Position. But I have uh, that blue binder that I have. I started writing stuff in. That I got. Oh, I need a ton of manuals. And believe it or not, you'll pay probably more for some of the manuals. Than I, I would do if I bought the cartridge. Um, I don't care if I get them in the box. Even though I got RC. I got like maybe... 10 Atari games now in the box. Uh, my biggest thing is, I probably won't even play the ones that are in the box. I'll just keep the cartridges and plug the cartridges in because it's a lot easier because I'm getting the plastic cases for the cartridges, even though I'm waiting for the guy who I buy the, the, the plastic uh, cases for these. If you notice, they're, the M Network and the M iMagics are taller because all this, the all uh, Mattel did they had their television. They took they all they did was take their Intellivision cartridge and slap an adapter at the end of it, so it fits into Atari, and they put a different card in. Because that's all this is. If you look at it, this is an Intellivision cartridge with an adapter on it. But uh, I'm hoping that they'll have because I'll buy fifty, and that that should fifty of the big ones should actually cover all the I, Mattel and I I Magic. Because so far, like here, you have a, Apollo games. Their cartridges are the same. Here you have Frogo games. Here you have the Coleco games, you know, for the Atari, which later on they became uh, black with red labels, too, because you had uh, Mousetrap. They, uh, they got rid of... Because they also have a red label, Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr., yeah, uh, I've been working on all the older games. So I'm, I'm enjoying playing them more than I, I do. Uh, I was playing a game, Neoverse, that was free download. To, it was a free download for the Xbox. I've been playing that on my Xbox One. But I still like these games better than a lot of them. And I also got a free Midway download that came this month. And I've been playing Joust and Defender on that. So that goes to show, I, I, I prefer the older games. And I don't have to put up with people online cursing at me. 
So that's the biggest thing that, that downloads with me about online play. The lack of uh, helpfulness. Especially when you're playing like a story mode like Destiny. And you you don't know what's going on because you've never done the level before. And you get these people who basically have no life and just keep playing the games. And you're fucking... Well, nope, sorry. I, well, okay, this is not going to be a, a video for kids now. But call me a fucking asshole. You know, I'm mean, like, you know, come on. Uh, I have a wife and family and kids that take up a lot of my time and stuff in my back. So, yeah, I can sit down and I can sit back and lay and play a game. Yeah, that's fine. But when I do play, it's usually some... I, I try to vary up the games. I get bored playing the same game over and over and over again. Like, uh, I got God of War 3 for the PS3. I played it so far. I stopped. I'll go back to it again. Same thing with the Days Combat game I got. Um... Uh, I'm not anymore. It seems like I just can't sit and play a game for hours and hours and hours and hours. It's like, uh, I can't do it. I don't know why. I used to be able to sit there and put 60 hours into a game in a week and be like, okay. No, it's unlucky if I can do 60 hours in a month or two into a game. Because I just I just get tired of it. The, the, the constant the same music, the, basically the same Just like uh, I got Robotron for uh, that was another game on the. And I can't, you know, I'm like, wow, I can sit there and play this game, try to get to high score. I mean, it's it's, it's hard, I mean, you know. It's like to see these these uh, people nowadays. Why not to play Call of Duty? I'm like, I'm the best in the world to see them play Robotron and, and try to think. A lot of those guys wouldn't be able to handle some of the old games. These so-called video game pros. But got four more Atari games, which actually for my collection adds just two. I got it's funny because down in my garage I have an old Atari case. It was a wooden case with a pull-out drawer. It holds about maybe like sixty games or probably even more. And I have almost that filled up. Everything that's in there is the game and the instructions. They have the instructions for every game that's in that case. And then I have little teeny they were for DVDs they used to be sold. They used to be sold at Walmart for a buck, and they raised them to a buck and a half. The cubes, I have like three or four cubes filled up with Atari games, and they're just the game, the cartridges. Then I have extra manuals. Eventually, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to run a store out of my house. I think that's the best thing to do when I when my workman's comp. Comic books, cards, toys, games. I'll list all glass. I'll list all my doubles in the garage. I'll put them up on a site, or maybe I'll work up on some kind of web page. And uh, sell the doubles. I'll go by the price guide. Because a lot of these games, price guide wise, uh, really ain't that bad. Uh, you know, compared. Because all you need is really the cartridge to play. And most of the cartridges are, are like five bucks. I mean, you, you spend $60 on, on a, a game in the store new. And something like. A lot of the old uh, games after they come out, they they go they go skyrocketing down. For most of them, very few hold their value at sixty and above. I would say probably ten percent of the market holds their value. And you know that's really not that good if you look at it, because they make so much. I mean, everything they make. You look at it, comic books. Buy older. I always say buy older. Buy older and everything. Because most people didn't save the stuff. Most people didn't collect the stuff back then. Most people played it, took it out of the box, destroyed it, lost the manuals, beat the shit out of their cartridges, and in the trash, or flea market, or yard sale stuff. So, that's, you know, that's how it was. Anything above 1980, I'd say basically anything above 1985, even 1990, I would go 90 and below is the stuff that I would buy. And that's the stuff I've been trying to buy. Uh, even though I, I just I got it a PS3 and I just bought a Dreamcast. Uh, the Dreamcast stuff's expensive. I go online and it's like, wow, I'm not paying I'm not paying a hundred dollars for a, a game a game I want for that. Uh, I think down the road I'll just I'll just start putting ads in Facebook and maybe in the newspaper buying comics, cards, toys, games, video games. And see what happens. 
and then I'll just, like I said, I'll just run a business in and out. When the money comes in, I'll buy. If the money doesn't come in, I just sit there, and if it does, it does. Because uh, I have way, my, way too much stuff. Because the one guy I was at the flea market, and I also noticed this too, when people want to buy your stuff at off stores, they don't want to give you squat. And a lot of collectors don't want to give you squat. They want everybody wants to buy stuff at less than twenty five percent of what it's worth. And I can see that they want to make money. Hell, I want to make money. That's why a lot of stuff I put, I put it basically maybe you know twenty percent of what I paid for. It, I, I tack on that, and yet still people can't buy, can't give me what you know it's worth. Yeah. Um, like the glasses, I had a lot of the. I had a lot of doubles of the 7-Eleven marble glasses, and they're, they're $20 a piece. So I, I put them up at $20, and people were like, I'll give you $10. i am like, no, buddy, I paid $20. That's what I want, $20. Because uh, they book for $20 to, $20 to $30 a glass, you know. And if you go up on eBay, you're lucky if you get any of them for less than $20 after you pay shipping and stuff. So, you know, what, what I was, you know selling for was pretty much you know what they were going for and that's what i was doing with a lot of the looney tune glasses but then ebay their calculating for shipping was terrible i ended up losing money on a lot of the glasses i sold because by the time ebay takes their cut and paypal takes their cut out of their money out of the shipping and handling fee that was like over i would say okay here's it i would sell a glass for say four dollars right i would charge Five bucks for shipping. Now, that was with the eBay calculator. They would say, oh, you know, weight-wise, it was five bucks. I would wrap it. I would take it down to the post office. And by the time eBay takes, the say, the $4 and then the five, so $9, they got like a they got like a buck and a half of my money between eBay and PayPal towards the shipping. Now... Then I'd be going, oh, it was $6 to mail. So uh, there goes all that money that I, I charge for shipping. That's already a negative dollar deficit on my shipping and handling fee onto uh, the price. And then the, their fees. So basically, I pay three and sell it for four. And by the time I paid shipping and handling and sent it out, I was negative money on my initial investment of the $3. So I I pulled all I pulled all my stuff off because eBay's price price the uh, fees too was was ridiculous because I was actually losing money every time I sold something because I was fair on my shipping cost and it depended on what time it sold and if they paid me because the, our post office is only open so long here in Millville most of the stuff I would ship out the day I got paid if not it went out the next day I was always on top of the and I had actually had one glass that, of all the glasses I, I, I shipped out, I had one incredible whole glass that didn't make it to the other side. And I was very, very disappointed. And I was very, very upset the guy didn't get it because he bought three of them and one of them. So I had to take, he sent me pictures. I had to, I had to put in a, I had to put in a, oh God, my mind is escaping me the word. I had to submit a, uh, like a reimbursement from the post office on the, because I had it insured, so I had to get the money of what, and I had to take a, had to print out the, uh, the eBay, you know, item, how much I charged, and eBay ended up paying me for the glass, not eBay, uh, the post office, and then I ref issued the guy a refund. Uh, I actually issued the refund first because once I put the paperwork in, I was like, you know what. It's, I'm going to get the money from the post office, not him. So, that's that's what happened. I issued the guy a refund, and it's like, I was surprised because uh, I've had stuff before when I lived at my mom and my dad's house. I used to have, uh, I never got it, a uh, creature feature set from the 70s from Tops with, you know, Bakugou and the Mummy, Wolfman, you know, all that. I had that set that I bought, and they were, oh, it was show delivered to your house. I'm like, nope, I'm sorry, it was never... Either the mailman delivered to the wrong house, and the person kept it, which I think that's exactly what happened, because it would, or somebody came on my porch and took it. But I never got that set. I never got reimbursed for the set, and the post office did nothing for me. 
Well, if you saw my video a long time ago when I wrote down the post, United States Post Office sucks, a guy down in South who I who I met on uh, YouTube was going, he wanted to know if I had any Star Wars stuff. I told him, yeah, he had all these comic books. I mean, a couple hundred, easily, a few hundred. And I said, you know what, I have a bunch of loose figures, I have a bunch of uh, play sets, I have some card sets, I have some comic books. So I made the guy a deal. He sends me all his stuff, and I made him a list of everything I had at Star Wars, and I would mail him that. Well, I never got the comic books. They disappeared in transit. Months later, I got the five comic books in the mail. I got five in a little bag that said, your item. The man never, never got any of his books back. This was in there, Alice. Oh, okay. Key I'm keeping it. that yeah. box. Oh. What else? Is there anything else in the mailbox, like letters? Something from me about a loan, okay. getting a credit but loan. I felt bad. I was going to send him some Star Wars stuff, but he was like, nope, I didn't. you didn't get the stuff. It's my fault. Because he didn't share the package either. So the post office uh, ended up keeping, like, I'd say easily six hundred dollars worth of comic books off the guy. Wow. Yeah, that's I, I read that I did a video about the post office sucks over that because I was like shocked, and then finally, uh, I took them back to and the post office kept the books that I ended up getting in the mail. Yeah, on top of that, really? After they delivered them, and the the guy at the post office kept them on me. I was like, okay, whatever. Huh? Probably took them home. I was a schmuck. Well. To say the least. I told Rusty, you know, to, to, you know, to find out what's going on and never got him back. No. I thought for sure I would have got him back, but I never did. So, uh, what are you going to do? You can't do nothing. The guy who sent me didn't have insurance. That's the way I try to do insurance on everything, you know, but I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, you, you, you I'm sure the guys who sent me these video games didn't insure them because... You don't think? Well, I don't know. Because USPS tracking, media origin... Usually with the media mail, they... I don't think media mail is actually insurable. I'm not sure. This is the cheapest form. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? I'm Alice? making a video. No, I'm making a video oh. for my King Joe. My mother-in-law is here. Say hello, Alice. Hello there, honeys. There you go. Uh, well, I just flipped around. You just saw a gallon of milk. Up close. But that does it for this edition of King Joe's Kingdom of Collectibles. And as always, I thank you guys for viewing and subscribing. King Joe out.